You're listening to The Philosopher's Note on the power of decision. More wisdom in less time. Hi, this is Brian. Welcome to The Philosopher's Notes on the power of decision by Raymond Charles Barker. Start with a quote. Success and failure are results of the use of the mind. Every success-motivated mind has been a decisive mind. Every failure-motivated mind has been an indecisive mind. Only the dreamer who acted with decision on his dream brought forth something new and valuable. End quote. That's Raymond Charles Barker from The Power of Decision. So Raymond Charles Barker is an old-school 20th century New Thought preacher. He's in the same school of thought, the science of mind, as Ernest Holmes, Michael Beckwith, Louise Hay, and that crowd. If you like them, you'll love Raymond. Super cool guy. Like all of these great books, this one's packed with more big ideas than I'll be able to easily cram into this note. So let's rock it. All right, the first big idea is, how's your estimate of yourself? Quote, you cannot go beyond your own self-accepted image. As long as you underestimate yourself, you cannot succeed in life, end quote. Amen. So, begs the question, how do you see yourself as a divinely inspired genius put on this planet to share your precious gifts and love and compassion and creativity and abundance? Awesome. Good answer. (laughs) And while we're shaping that self-image, we want to remember that we aren't some helpless little creature trying to get by in a world of other separate little creatures. Nope. According to Barker and his friends, we're pure intelligence. And our job is to recognize this fact and align with and express it in our day-to-day lives. Powerful stuff. Ernest Holmes, the founder of the Science of Mind movement, says this in Creative Mind and Success. You can see the notes on that. He says, quote, The individual who has the most power is the one who has the greatest realization of the divine presence and to whom this means the most as an active principle of his life, end quote. Irvin Seal, another old school new thought dude, says this. You can see the notes on take off from within. Quote, one can never love himself as he ought until he esteems himself in terms of his spiritual heritage, a divinely generated being destined to win, to achieve, and to express the nature of his source. As water rises no higher than the level of its source, so a man can rise no higher than his personal estimate of his source, end quote. Love that. Walter Russell, the somewhat obscure 20th century genius, says this. You can check out the notes on the man who tapped the secrets of the universe for more. He says, quote, early in life, I found that to achieve greatness, one had to go only one inch beyond mediocrity. But that one inch is so hard to go that only those who become aware of God in them can make the grade, for no one can achieve that one inch alone, end quote. Beautiful. Next big idea is the present becoming the future. Quote, the greatest creative minds producing masterpieces in art, literature, dance, music, and the sciences have never been satisfied with their works. Never judge yourself by what you have done. Judge yourself in terms of what you will do. You are not the past. You are the present becoming the future. End quote. Dig that. Osho and Emerson say similar stuff. Osho tells us, and you can see the notes on the book of understanding. He says, quote, man is not born perfect. He is born incomplete. He is born as a process. He is born on the way as a pilgrim. That is his agony and his ecstasy too. Agony because he cannot rest. He has to go ahead. He has always to go ahead. He has to seek and search and explore. He has to become because his being arises only through becoming. Becoming is his being. He can only be if he is on the move. Evolution is intrinsic to man's nature. Evolution is his very soul. And those who take themselves for granted remain unfulfilled. Those who think they are born complete remain unevolved. Then the seed remains the seed. It never becomes a tree. It never knows the joys of spring and the sunshine and the rain and the ecstasy of bursting into millions of flowers. That explosion is the fulfillment. That explosion is what existence is all about, exploding into millions of flowers. When the potential becomes the actual, only then is man fulfilled. End quote. 
Wow, I love that. Ralph Waldo Emerson, you can see the notes on his essays, reminds us, quote, genius appeals to the future. And he says, a feeble man can see the farms that are fenced and tilled, the houses that are built. The strong man sees the possible houses and farms. His eye makes estates as fast as the sun breeds clouds, end quote. Go Emerson. Plus, positive psychologists are scientifically establishing the same fact. In the words of Sonia Liebmerski, and you can see the notes on her The How of Happiness, she says, quote, In 1932, weighed down by the sorrows and agonies of his self-absorbed and aimless clients, an Australian psychiatrist named W. Baron Wolf summed up his philosophy like this. If you observe a really happy man, you will find him building a boat, writing a symphony, educating his son, growing double dahlias in his garden, or looking for dinosaur eggs in the Gobi Desert. He was right. People who strive for something personally significant, whether it's learning a new craft, changing careers, or raising moral children, are far happier than those who don't have strong dreams or aspirations. Find a happy person, and you will find a project. End quote. Of course, we want to completely accept who we are and all the wonderful learning opportunities we've had in our lives, a.k.a. mistakes or failures, plus all the wonderful things we've achieved. As Nathaniel Brandon says in Six Pillars of Self-Esteem, see the notes, he says, quote, Pride is the emotional reward of achievement. It is not a vice to be overcome, but a value to be attained. And he also tells us that self-esteem contemplates what needs to be done and says, I can. Pride contemplates what has been accomplished and says, I did. When you've embraced what is, we want to find something we can get excited about. So, what are you excited about creating in your life? Next big idea is walking forward. Quote, the decision to let go of that which has completed its course in your experience is even more important than the decision to welcome new ideas. You cannot walk forward by looking backward. New wine cannot be put into old bottles. For the Bible states that the old bottles will break. You intuitively know what should depart from your life. End quote. Love this. You cannot walk forward by looking backward. If we want to go forward, we can't be staring backward. Glancing once in a while is fine, but staring, not such a good idea. Think about driving your car. You have a rear view mirror, but you don't stare at it all the time, do you? I hope not. <laughs> Same thing with our lives. Let's let go of the past and fill our bottles up with new wine. Next big idea. What thought seeds are you planting? Quote, you cannot think and feel negatively over a period of time and have positive situations maintained in your experience. The law of the subconscious can only bear the kind of fruit based on the seed ideas you have given them. Jesus said you could not gather figs from thistles. Paul called this sowing and reaping. The hermetic teaching stated that what goes in must come out. All are saying the same thing, end quote. Emerson's genius comments come to mind here. He says, quote, sow a thought and you reap an action. Sow an act and you reap a habit. Sow a habit and you reap a character. Sow a character and you reap a destiny, end quote. And I love Pema Chodron's comments on the matter as well. She says, and you can see the notes on the places that scare you, quote, this is the path we take in cultivating joy, learning not to armor our basic goodness, learning to appreciate what we have. Most of the time, we don't do this. Rather than appreciate where we are, we continually struggle to nurture our dissatisfaction. It's like trying to get flowers to grow by pouring cement on the garden. End quote. So the next time you find yourself swimming in negative thoughts, think about the fact that you're pouring concrete on your potential garden of happiness and quit doing that. <laughs> Here's one way to do it via Sonia Liebermersky. Again, this is from The How of Happiness, which totally rocks. Highly recommend the book. She says, quote, write down your barrier thoughts and then consider ways to reinterpret the situation. In the process, ask yourself questions like, what else could this situation mean? Can anything good come from it? Does it present any opportunities for me? What lessons can I learn and apply to the future? Did I develop any strengths as a result? End quote. 
So there you go. Let's steer away from the concrete and pour some love on our seeds, shall we? The next big idea is you know, quote, all intelligence abides in your consciousness and awaits your call upon it. You may say that you do not know what to do, but at the center of your mind is the clear decision you should make. It is right there, end quote. Carlos Castaneda tells us we want to be on the path with heart while Joseph Campbell tells us to follow our bliss. Here's Castaneda's wisdom from the Wheel of Time. You can see the notes on that. He says, Anything is one of a million paths. Therefore, a warrior must always keep in mind that a path is only a path. If he feels that he should not follow it, he must not stay with it under any conditions. His decision to keep on that path or to leave it must be free of fear or ambition. He must look at every path closely and deliberately. There is a question that a warrior has to ask mandatorily. Does this path have a heart? End quote. And how about Joseph Campbell's wisdom from Pathways to Bliss? You can see the notes on that. He says, quote, Your bliss can guide you to that transcendent mystery because bliss is the welling up of the energy of the transcendent wisdom within you. So when the bliss cuts off, you know that you've cut off the welling up. Try to find it again, end quote. Dig that. So our heart, or bliss, is a great guide to bring us back to the right decision. And to Barker's point, we always know the decision we should make. The challenge is, as Castaneda says, having the courage to actually follow it. In Castaneda's words, he says, quote, But how will I know for sure whether a path has a heart or not? Anybody would know that. The trouble is nobody asks the question. And when a man finally realizes that he has taken a path without a heart, the path is ready to kill him. At that point, very few men can stop to deliberate and leave the path, end quote. So what decision do you need to make? Here's the next big idea. An angel in your subconscious. Quote, all of this is already in you. The great use it. The non-great do not, so they remain the non-great. Decide upon some thing, situation, or condition that you want right now in your present life. Be definite in this decision. Do not limit your decision by investigating the probable reasons why it will never happen. That is the detour to nothing. All false speculations of defeat have to be ruled out of your consciousness. If they enter into the decision for even a fleeting moment, the decision is robbed of authority and the subconscious mind cannot act upon it. You do not need to know how the final result will come to pass. That is the function of the subconscious. It has ways and means that, if they were known, would stagger the intellect. End quote. Reminds me of a great creative exercise I love called the angel's advocate. So we've all heard of the devil's advocate, that voice of reason, in quotes, that tells us all the things that can and probably will go wrong in any given endeavor. Now, the devil's advocate can be a great resource for some situations, so let's not get rid of it entirely. But how about we don't let the devil come in until the angel has done her work thoroughly? Here's the deal. Let's imagine you have an idea of something you'd like to create in your life, whether it's in your career, creative pursuits, intimate relationship, family, health, whatever. Let's excuse the devil from the room and invite in our angel's advocate. Now, this angel is pretty extraordinary. She is incredible at helping us see all the things that can go right in our lives and helps us paint the most amazing picture of our ideal that we could possibly imagine. So let's get to work. Imagine you've got an angel on your right shoulder and she can wave a magic wand to make anything and everything you can imagine come to life. What would you imagine? Seriously, let's do it. If everything went perfect in my life, I worked hard, embodied the ideals I know to be true, Here's what my life would look like in 10 years. Think about that. In the PDF, I've got space for you to write something down. So envision your ideal in every way you can imagine. You've got an angel there who can bring anything to life. What would it be? You may want to press pause and think about that. Come back when you're ready. We will be here. (laughs) All right. I guess we being I. For the record, this is not just self-help silliness. In fact, positive psychologists call this kind of thing a best selves diary exercise. And they've scientifically proven the fact that reflecting on your ideal future increases your happiness levels. 
So let's flex our optimism muscles and get our angels advocate on and check out the how of happiness if you want more on uh, the science of the best selves diary. You can see the note on that. How about the next big idea? Lower your guilt load and increase your health. Quote, the lower your guilt load, the greater your mental health, end quote. Did you know the Tibetans don't even have a word for guilt in their language? Nope. The closest thing they have is akin to, quote, intelligent regret that decides to do things differently. I like that. You have some guilt? Maybe you can lighten your load by swapping out the guilt for some intelligent regret that decides to do things differently. Another tool is Louise Hay's concept of moving from shoulds to coulds. You can see the notes on You Can Heal Your Life for that. Really powerful. She suggests we start noticing how often we use should in our lives. Like, I shouldn't have said that to so-and-so. Or, I should have turned off the TV earlier. Or, insert your favorite should here. Know that each of those shoulds we're piling on ourselves is bringing us into a deeper and deeper sense of helplessness and disempowerment, which is the quickest way to get ourselves depressed. And finally, the world's foremost authority on self-esteem, Nathaniel Brandon, speaks of the importance of self-acceptance in his brilliant book, The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem. See notes on that. In fact, self-acceptance is the second pillar of self-esteem and might be best summed up as, quote, as Nathaniel Brandon says, my refusal to be in an adversarial relationship with myself, end quote. That's powerful. So what's stressing you out right now that's creating some guilt, shame, ick? And is now a good time to lighten your guilt load a bit or maybe a lot? through exercising some intelligent regret that decides to do things differently, or perhaps some should-to-could mojo? Good answer. All right, the next big idea is watch your moods. Quote, the more you watch your moods, attitudes, habits, and central ideas and stop all basic negatives from lingering in your area of attention, the richer and fuller your prosperity will be, end quote. As you know, if you've read many of these notes, we can quote quite a few people on this subject. Let's stick with Tolle for now. You can see the notes on the power of now. He says, quote, watch out for any sign of unhappiness in yourself in whatever form. It may be the awakening of the pain body. This can take the form of irritation, impatience, a somber mood, a desire to hurt, anger, rage, depression, a need to have some drama in your relationships, and so on. Catch it the moment it awakens from its dormant state, end quote. Can you catch your negative moods a little more quickly today and maybe Aikido them into something more positive? Sweet. That leads us to our final big idea, a grand utopia. Quote, we would be living in a grand utopia today if every great idea that arose in men's minds had been followed by decision and right action. Too many great ideas have been meditated upon and then discarded. Usually the thinker discards them for what seemed to him to be plausible reasons. No great discovery in history has been based on plausible reasons. Automobiles were implausible in 1900. Radios were implausible in 1910. Transatlantic planes were implausible in 1920. Yet thinkers let such ideas rise into their consciousness out of the wellspring of the infinite intelligence. We should all be grateful that these thinkers decided to try the ideas they had. Every scientific mind has made the implausible plausible, end quote. I love that. Wayne Dyer describes something similar in his great book, The Power of Intention. You can see the notes. He says, quote, The Wright brothers didn't contemplate the staying on the ground of things. Alexander Graham Bell didn't contemplate the non-communication of things. Thomas Edison didn't contemplate the darkness of things. In order to float an idea into your reality, you must be willing to do a somersault into the unconceivable and land on your feet, contemplating what you want instead of what you don't have, end quote. It's amazing. I love that thought. and I love that book too, The Power of Intention. And did you know that at one point, learned scientists thought our bodies would explode if they went over 30 miles per hour? Yep. In his brilliant book, The Big Leap, you can see the notes on that, Gay Hendricks tells us about that and likens it to the current notions of the limits on just how much happiness we can withstand in our lives. 
He says this, quote, am I willing to feel good and have my life go well all the time? At first glance, you might ask who wouldn't say yes to all these questions? Well, for many of us, the idea of all of this positive emotion seems far-fetched to begin with. It's easy for us to just assume that with the positive comes the negative. To that I say, why not get willing and see what happens? We humans have a long and wonderful history of transcending our beliefs about what's possible. In the early days of the steam-powered train, learned scientists urged capping the speed at 30 miles per hour because they believed that the human body exploded at speeds greater than that. Finally, some brave people risked going beyond that limiting belief and found they did not explode. I think we're approximately at the same stage of development with regard to our ability to feel good and have our lives go well, end quote. So, what do you currently think is impossible in your life? Let's tap into the divine within us as we dance with our angels and decide to create our ideal lives in a grand utopia in the process, shall we? Say yes. Let's go rock it. All right, that is the note on the power of decision by Raymond Charles Barker. Let's look at a little blurb on Raymond and some other big ideas, or rather notes I think you'll enjoy. And then we'll look at some great quotes from the sidebar and call it a day. Call it a note, at least. All right, so Raymond Charles Barker distinguished himself as one of the most dynamic presidents of the International New Thought Alliance. In addition to this, he was a well-known minister, author, and teacher within the New Thought Movement, opening the first Church of Religious Science in New York City in 1946. If you enjoyed this note, I think you'll also really enjoy the note on Creative Mind and Success, You Can Heal Your Life, Spiritual Liberation, The Man Who Tapped the Secrets of the Universe, Ask and It Is Given, Ralph Waldo Emerson, The Power of Intention, and The Big Leap. Here's some quotes. All of these are from Raymond Charles Barker from The Power of Decision. He says, I dare you to think in great terms. I challenge you to dream a great dream. Nothing is impossible to those who decide upon possibility. These people are willing to be temporarily uncomfortable in order to achieve expanded consciousness and reach new goals. All successful people have good control of their mental attention, whether or not they are consciously aware of it. They think what they want, and they want what they think. Every person living has made mistakes. Those who proceed with living never waste time licking their wounds. New ideas take them the next step of the way. The larger your understanding of yourself as consciousness, the freer you are of guilt. Your optimism is undisturbed. You have learned from your mistakes but are not stymied by them. This is the way of progressive order, the way of creative thinking. Always we stand between the old that is familiar and the new that is unfamiliar. It takes courage to practice this science and to grasp the new while letting go of the old. You are able to accomplish anything you really want to accomplish. To have a correct mental achievement, you discard all indecision, all doubt, all fear. You are greater than you think you are. You hold the key to life in your mind. You are the result of your past decisions. You will become and experience the result of your present decisions. Join me in deciding on the side of greatness. Happiness is genuine satisfaction with your present experience. Indecision is actually the individual's decision to fail. You need new ideas, new motivations, and new horizons of accomplishment. And finally, nothing is true unless it works. And it has to work for you not for someone else. Well, there you go. That's The Power of Decision, a short little book, 165 pages by Raymond Charles Barker. Highly recommend it. Hope you enjoyed, and I'm really excited to share more with you soon. Have a great day. We hope you enjoyed this Philosopher's Note. Please go to www.philosophersnotes.com to download more.